Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a cheap bed occupancy sensor using the MPR121 capacitive touch sensor and Arduino and my sensors. So I'm going to show you how I did all this, but first I just wanted to give you a quick demo here. So hopefully you can see that just using Impura Home here. And then I'll just press down. So um, I have this coded with a five second delay. You can see it just turned on there. Impure Home just has a slight delay, but it is five seconds. Um, the reason I do that is so it will um, prevent some false positives, and I'll talk more about that in a minute here. But basically, uh, that's the demonstration. I have multiple sensors on my bed, um, and the reason I do that is uh, I like to prevent, I have motion sensors in my room to turn on and off my lights, and my blinds go up and down automatically with the sunlight. So I have it um, preventing that when I'm in bed. So if I sleep late or if the sun comes up earlier, um, you get the idea. So basically just I can key off of when me or my wife is in bed. Uh, and then hopefully eventually I'm going to automate the coffee maker so I can turn that on when I get out of bed. So I'm using this in my bed, but it could be used in other places as well, maybe a chair or a couch, um, any place where you want to sense occupancy through capacitive touch. Like I said at the very beginning, this is a cheap sensor. Total, it cost me around $10, which I've searched all over the place for bed occupancy sensors, and they are much more expensive than that. But I just am starting out with my bed. It was an experiment, and it's been working awesome so far. I um, had it for almost two months, and it's been great. So anyway, let's see how to build this. Okay, so here is the sensor. It's really simple, although it looks really messy right now. Ignore these right here. These, This is version 2 of my bed occupancy sensor that's kind of in production right now. Um, I'll soon replace it with the capacitive touch sensors, but I have other sensors integrated into this whole setup in my bedroom. So I didn't want to confuse everything um, before I had a chance to test it and also make a video to show you how I made this. So these actually work great. They're weight detection, but um, you need a lot of them because if you roll over or shift positions or something, it no longer detects, and then lights turn on, blinds go up, which is obviously no fun. Uh, and then also, um, it actually even broke. This one broke, which I haven't got around to fixing. And you can feel the cardboard that I had to put in there when you're sleeping. So, this setup's much nicer um, that I'm going to switch out to with the capacitive touch. All that aside, let's talk about this sensor. So it's really cheap, really easy. Um, basically, we have an NRF radio, then we have a Arduino. This is a Nano for testing. I'm going to sh put in a Pro Mini, though. Got a couple LEDs. These are optional. Uh, and then some resistors. I'm using 4.7K resistors, so it keeps the light uh, really dim. Uh, but I do like to have the LEDs just so I can see, you know, if it's not working, especially in my testing, was it just a radio transmission issue? or was the sensor not working. So this will show me if it's detecting something, the LED will be on. If it's not, it'll be off. Okay, so then we have a wire that goes over to the MPR121 sensor here. So from there, we have wires that go out to each of our capacitant, capacitive touch sensors. Okay, these sensors are super easy to make, super cheap. All I did was took some copper tape like this that I had left over from my refrigerator monitoring project. Uh, and then I just put it into some masking tape or painter's tape, whatever you call it, uh, to kind of protect it because without that it ripped off very quickly. So I reinforced it down here uh, with a couple pieces and then just did a strip along the whole sensor here. Notice I didn't tape it down, it's loose. When I did tape it down to my bed, uh, I found that it ripped, ripped out the wires because I'm using incredibly thin wires. These are wires pulled from a USB cable. So I just cut up an old mouse or keyboard, I don't remember what, and then uh, pulled out the wires and I got four wires from there, which I'm using for my sensor here on each of these. And then I just soldered them to the end of the copper tape. So it was really simple. 
Uh, if you didn't have any masking tape and you want to experiment with some others, I'm sure some other type of tape would work. It's just to reinforce um, that so it doesn't break off. Okay, so use USB cable or you don't have to, I guess. I like USB because it's very thin and I don't feel it when it's under my bed. And same with this copper tape and masking tape. Don't feel it at all, which is great. All right, let's move on down here. I'm going to post the wiring diagram in the video description so you can check that out but I'll show you how it's all built here first okay so this is our MPI 121 so basically we just have our wires here um, going 0 to 3 and that would be for one side of the bed and then 4 to 7 would be to the other side of the bed okay so I'm using USB and then you can see it just goes on each side of the bed um, and then we go back here, and then I just have four connections on this side. So 3.3 volt power, that's important. Make sure you're using that. We have the SCL and the SDA connections, which those will go into pin 4 and 5. Sorry, analog pin 4 and 5 on your Arduino, and then ground. Now, I wanted to get this sensor wire, or this, I guess, MPR121 connection long as long as possible because the other sensors that I have are underneath my bed and I wanted to be able to extend this out and use the same Pro Mini. So what I found was I started out using just my normal Cat5 cable that I use for most of my sensors and it was giving me really strange results. Um, I switched over to this shielded USB cable. You can kind of see underneath the tape. Um, also from a mouse I think and that gave me great results. So I highly recommend if you're going to do a long run, just use a shielded USB cable. You can see here uh, that it's just soldered into my Pro Mini here, or sorry, my Nano. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be much better connected than this, but this is just for testing. But anyway, moral of the story, use the shielded USB cable if you're going to go uh, any length um, longer than a couple of inches. All right, and like we already talked about, we have the LEDs, power, and then the radio, which will communicate back with the MySensors gateway. Before I get into the actual code of how things work, I wanted to go over a little bit of how the MPR-121 sensor works. So it has a baseline value and a filtered value, and when those differ by a certain amount, it will trigger. So this normally works great if you're just detecting momentary touches because the filtered value drops below the baseline value and then you can detect that as a triggered state. So here in this graph, this is before I got into bed. I have basically four different wires connected and then these are their states. So they're very close to each other within about four, um, four numbers, four values. Uh, and then when I go over and get into bed, you can see it drops significantly. So this is the baseline value, number eight, and then the filter value is number nine. So 150 basically points it drops once it detects my body. So you can see as the sensors get further down, I guess this would be the ones near my legs. It's not as sensitive, but still there's a change um, a pretty significant change. One of the great things about the MPR-121 is it auto calibrates. So if you're using this, you know, for a touch sensor on your wall or something like that, it will auto, -cal it will auto calibrate as the temperature and humidity changes and, and other factors. It's not so great though when you're trying to detect occupancy in your bed or wherever else you're detecting it over long periods of time. So you can see here this line is the auto calibration happening. So the baseline value is steadily declining until about here when it reaches the same value or similar value to the filtered value. So that makes it so we can't, or basically if that were to, um, if we were just to leave it by detecting a change in the filtered value, your bed would become unoccupied after, at least for me, it's about, what's that, four hours? So that's not really a good thing. Um, I just want to show you a couple more of these points here. So if I go over, we can see that when I get out of bed, the baseline value will stay close to the same uh, and then slowly work its way back up to the filter value. And then the filter value jumps up almost instantly when I get out of bed. 
So we can see here it's 450 and 550. So it jumped way back up really quickly. So that's the filtered value. Okay, so now notice that the filtered value here when I got out of bed, if you follow this line across, is very similar to the filtered value when I got in bed. So we're looking at 552 here. If I go to the first one, it's 560. So it's a difference of 8. So I ended up not using the baseline or filtered values in conjunction with each other. All I'm doing is using the filtered values, and I'm recording what it was when I got in bed, and I'm comparing against that for when I get out. I'll show you what that all looks like in the code, so let's go over and take a look at it now. Okay, so here is my code. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is get the bare conductive MPR121 library. So I have a link here in the description for how to get that, and then you'll just add that to your Arduino libraries folder. Okay, and then moving on down, we have some things that you may want to configure for yourself. So I have uh, the sketch name and sketch version, so these will be passed on to your gateway and to your controller. So if you wanted to rename those, you could. And then the node ID. So if you use uh, custom node IDs, you can change it here. Otherwise, just put all caps auto and it will pull the next one from your gateway. And then I have this code set up for two... I guess a two-person bed, so my wife and myself. So if you wanted, you could just remove the code for one of them, uh, so you could have it for a one-person bed, but um, I have it for two. So I have a, a left and a right, and that, I guess, is if you're lying down in bed facing up. Moving down, the rest of the stuff you can leave the same. The only other things that you may want to change are the awk delay and the variance values here. The awk delay is used to pause or delay sensing. So what that's used for is it will check five times. And I'll show you this in the code further down. But in, in this case, it's going to pause for one second. So it'll, it'll check for five seconds before it triggers either occupied or not occupied. And that's useful. I found that if I'm shifting around or rolling over or something, occasionally it will, I guess, untrigger and then... I don't want that to be sent to my controller because I'm still in bed. So I want it to actually wait for five seconds and pull it five different times to check that. So that's what the awk delay value is used for. So if you feel like it's taking too long, you can shorten that. Or maybe it's taking, or it's going too short, so you could lengthen that. And I'll show you in the code how that actually works. The next thing is the variance value. So that's what it will use to register a trigger or a not trigger state. So I found 15 to be a great value. 15 is more than enough to detect, but not too little to not detect or too much to detect. So if you're getting false positives, um, you know, somehow it's just triggering itself during the day, you could increase this number a little bit. But I found for me, um, 15 works great. If you're not getting detections, you could try and shrink this number, but definitely don't go below four. Okay, the rest of this stuff in here, just leave the same, and I'll show you the, the pertinent parts of the code just to help you get a better understanding of the awk delay and the variance value. Okay, so I just wanted to show you some of this code um, in the loop statement. Uh, this is where all the logic is happening, and if you find you need to tweak it at all, I just wanted to describe what I've done so you'd have a better understanding and you could make changes if you need to. So basically, the first thing is it pauses for the amount of time that the awk delay is set for. So in my case, one second, and then if it's over a second, based on the MELIS reading, it will run through this, this check here and read the data from the sensors. So basically it's getting the filtered data, and then it's going to step through in a for loop and check each of those sensors. So in my case, this is the first four that it'll step through. So it's assigning filtered value for the first sensor, then it'll step through each of them. And I just have some serial prints here for debugging. And then this is the logic for how it triggers if it's occupied or not. So basically it's checking a previously recorded filtered value, and then it's saying subtract the current value, and if it's greater than the variance value, that means it's occupied. So then it says, hey, have we already figured out that this bed is occupied? And if we haven't, then we're going to assign the filtered capture to whatever the filtered value previous was. Now this is basically to get around 
the auto calibration of the MPR-121. So what it's going to do is record what it was previously. So let's just say it was 550, and it will store that value. And then we're going to use that later on to figure out when someone leaves the bed, because we're going to compare against that 550. Then it also flags the occupied to 1, which will be used in this check right here, so it doesn't continuously record the, the capture. If it's not greater than the variance value, so this is going to be the most common thing in this else statement, that it's not greater, then we check to see if it's still occupied. So basically we're saying, is the current filtered value less than the filtered capture? So this is what it was when it was occupied, so let's say 550 minus the variance value times 2. So you may need to tweak this. I found that this works well for me. So basically let's say 550 minus 30, so that's 520, and then let's say normally when I'm on it, it's about 450. So that would be true if I'm still in bed. So this is going to flag it to be occupied that I'll use in my logic further below. Else, if that's not true, the bed's no longer occupied because the filtered value is no longer less. It jumped back up somewhere around the 550. So then that will no longer be true, so this is not occupied. So then what we're going to do is we're going to set the right occupied. We're going to increase it um, by this occupied value. So this is our, um, our for loop still. So it could, in theory, this right occupied could equal 4, could just equal 1. But either way, we're going to reduce that down later to just have it occupied equal 1. So it steps through that code for each of our sensors, and then it's going to use it in our logic to check it five times. This code down here is where we're checking our occupied state for the five seconds. So if we have this array called aux state, and then we're going to rotate each of the values plus one. So that will take whatever was there last second and increment it one in the, in the variable. And then we're going to set our current state to the aux state four. So basically that gives us the last five seconds of readings or whatever our aux um, delay variable is. And then right here, we're just going to set it to 1 so or 0. If it's greater than 1, we set it to 1. If it's 0, it equals 0. Okay, and then in here, we just compare. If all states are the same, then we'll change the variable and send it back to our gateway. If they're not the same, then it won't change it. And we also check to make sure that we haven't already sent the value to the gateway here. So basically, this is saying our current state is not equal to what our previous state was. If that's true, then it's different, and we want to send the message to our gateway, and then we're also going to change the state or the status of our LED light. So it's either going to be high or low. Okay, so that's it. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and check out the link in the video description, and that'll take you to the MySensor site where you can get the code, the wiring diagram, and any questions answered if you have them. Thanks for watching, everyone.